Hey guys, it's Spook, and today I'm going to show you how I edit my Phantom 3 Professional drone videos with DaVinci Resolve 12. Now, I've used a Final Cut Pro 10 in the past, as well as Adobe Premiere Pro CC. And those two have been my editor for uh, quite a while for videos, even before I got my, my Phantom. Uh, but in the past month, I've pretty much made the entire switch over to DaVinci Resolve 12. Uh, DaVinci Resolve 12 is completely free. It may not have as many plugins as uh, Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, but it does have a built-in linear editor, non-linear editor. That's uh, very good. Can do transitions, uh, different effects for you. Can edit your audio. But the most powerful feature of DaVinci Resolve, as most of you uh, watching this video may know, is its color grading ability. And it used to be that you can only get the light version uh, but now they've released in version 12 the full version completely free. So let's go ahead and get into the app and I will show you how I edit my videos. Now a lot of people say that it's a, a steep learning curve, especially if you're coming from another editor. And that may be the case if you are not uh, familiar with it. So I'm going to try to go slowly and, and walk you through this process. The first time you download DaVinci Resolve 12 and install it, it's going to ask you to set up a user and, and things like that. And just, just go ahead and, and do that. It's pretty much uh, self-explanatory. I've already done that, so it jumps directly into my project manager. You can either continue with a project that you've already done. I have a, a bunch of them. Or you can just go with a brand new untitled project. And that's what we're going to do. Once you've selected your projects, you're going to see the main DaVinci Resolve interface, which has pretty much four main components. Some people call these rooms, some people call them modules, other call them tabs, but they're just four different sections of the application. The first one that you are dropped into is called the media section, and this is where you can add your clips to your project and then begin editing. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I have a couple of clips from uh, shots that I've done recently. So let's go ahead and just pull one in. Right now I'm looking at it in a list view with details, but you can switch with this icon right here to thumbnail view so you know what you're, you're looking at. So let's pull in this clip right here from uh, Balboa Park. And it's gonna ask me, since the default project settings is uh, set in a certain way that doesn't match this video clip, so it's gonna ask me and say, uh, do I want to match the frame rate, format, so on and so forth? And I say sure. And let's go ahead and pull in some uh, some audio as well so that we have uh, some music to work with this. So that's pretty much adding clips to your project. Obviously you can add a lot more. If I wanted to go back and say add, a, add another one in, like this one, I can do that. And you can add as many as you would like. The next step in putting together your video is the edit tab or module. And this is the nonlinear editor of DaVinci Resolve. It's actually quite good. It uh, may look very preliminary, basic, uh, doesn't have a lot of features, but it's actually quite powerful. It can do ripple editing and all of the uh, features that you may be used to. So I just go ahead and drag my clip down into the timeline. It will automatically create a new video track and since this doesn't have any audio, the audio track is blank. Let's go ahead and pull in my second clip too, just so you can see it. And then I can drag my music into the audio. Now the music is longer than my video, so I can just cut that with the razor tool and delete the portion that I don't need. Now this is going to create kind of an abrupt change for the audio. So what you notice is that if I move my mouse to the top of the clip, I have this little little marker here. If I click and drag that in, it essentially does my fade for me. So let's fade it three seconds. And you can do the same thing with your your video, of course. Okay, so let's do the same thing so that they match. You don't have to be exact. Close enough is, is good for, for this kind of work. Uh, maybe you want to have a little fade in at the beginning. So maybe two seconds or something like that. Okay. And 
that's that's pretty much good for editing. Now, let me go ahead and just play this and show you kind of what it looks like. We'll pull the playhead all the way back. And that's pretty basic. So my footage looks kind of crappy because it's recorded in log mode and I haven't done the color grading yet, but we'll get to that. Uh, maybe at this stage you wanted to do a little uh, title. So I'm going to drag the text from the toolbox onto my on, on top of my clip here and uh, pull it out a little bit, make it a little longer, maybe four seconds. You can see that's the title. There's nothing in the inspector because I haven't actually clicked on the text yet, so let's do that. And we can just say Balboa Park. We can change the size of the font. We can add shadow, drop shadow offset. I've found that uh, for the X offset, if I wanted to go to the lower right, maybe six pixels. And on the Y, I do negative four. That works really well. You can change your text, your fonts style of your fonts, color, all of that jazz, as well as the position. And one of the cool things in DaVinci Resolve, and it works in, in almost every place that you can uh, control position or make adjustment, is that you can just click and drag your mouse. So for example, I can pull it to the left by clicking and dragging. I can pull it to the right. If I go too far and it jumps off screen, I can always pull it back. Okay, let's bring it down a little bit. Oops, there we go. That looks pretty good. And let's check that and see how that looks. Okay, so there was my quick fade in. There's my title. Perfect. We can go to the end and check to see how it fades out too. And there goes my audio and my video. The next module we'll be in is the color module. And this is where people get pretty lost. Let's go ahead and edit the first clip in our sequence here. I'm just gonna move the playhead back so I can see what's going on. If you're just starting out, one of the things that you can do is just click this A. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you what happens. This is basically auto color correct. And for the most part, it tries to do a good job of just kind of making everything neutral. Um, and it does really bring that color and contrast back into the video, as you can see. Okay, I'll undo that. Um, but if you're lost, that's a good place to start. If you want to do things manually, you have all of your scopes, the usual suspect. I have mine split out in a parade, an RGB parade. You can use it as a a combined waveform. You can look at the vector scope, you can look at the histogram. Okay. Let's take the parade waveform. Now if I were doing this manually, I would try to get my shadows, which is down here, down right above zero, just touching it, and I try to get my highlights to touch uh, the 1023 mark here, just to increase my contrast and make the image pop. And I do that by these adjustments right here. And they're called lift, gamma, and gain. And they're basically equivalent to shadows, mid-range, and your high, high, high tones. Within these color wheels, you can also view them as bars, if you like. And if you did shoot in the log format that DaVinci Resolve recognized, there is also a log correction that shows you the shadow midtones highlight, but we'll just work on primary wheels. You can take your time to explore this, but if you wanna take your shadows down, you just click on the dial here and drag, and you watch your scope, and when it gets down to where you want it to be, you stop. So maybe about right there. The same thing with my highlight or the gains. So I drag that up, and just until my blues start to just touch. There you go. Now, that's almost the same as auto color correct. Not quite, but almost. So what does offset do? Well, offset is pretty simple. 
it uh, allows you to correct for color cast. So for example, if this is a bit cool, and it, it is because it was shot in the late afternoons, probably about 40 minutes before sunset, but it just looks cool. So I can bring some warmth into it by taking my offset to the uh, orange, yellow orange bit. And you can see right away that it got warmer. Now I can take this to the extreme and really get a dramatic orange effect, but that that's not what I want. You can also bring it in any direction you want and get a bunch of different effects. So playing with this, you can really get some cool grading effects that uh, you may be interested in. The other thing that I usually like to do is I increase the contrast just a tad, so maybe 1.1, anywhere from 1.05 to 1.1. And I also like to bump my saturation up just a tad, because I shoot in log, everything is very desaturated. Um, I'm going to bring this up to maybe 60. Okay. Other things that you can do, and I'll let you explore, there are a bunch of curves that you can work with. I'm not going to go into them into them in detail because this is an intro. Um, but one of the things that you may be interested in is to sharpen your footage. So click on this icon here. If you mouse over, it says blur. But when you go into it, there's this drop down right here where you can select sharpen. And you basically control that with your radius slider. So if I drag this down, it gets very sharp. You see that? If I drag it up, it gets very blurry. I find maybe between 40 and 45 is, is enough. So I'm going to leave it about 45. Okay, I kind of like that look. Last thing you may want to do with your video, if you want to give it kind of this dramatic look, is to uh, kind of letterbox it so that it's in uh, a cinema aspect ratio. You can do that by going to uh, the controls down here and, and changing your output sizing right here. Okay, But I'm not going to do that because that's kind of affecting only this clip. The easiest way to do it is just to go to color on the menu, go down to output blanking and select the ratio that you want. So let's say you want the 2.35 to 1 ratio, click that. And it basically affects all clips in your timeline. Okay. Now, since I don't want that, I'm going to go and undo it. Now, here's the cool thing. Let me change this back to clip. Okay. You have all these nodes that you can layer on top of each other and make different edits, uh, almost like little steps that you take in your color grading so that if you want to undo one set of, of uh, edits, you don't lose all the stuff you did at the beginning. So let's say you did your basic edits, sharpen, what have you. And then you want to really do kind of an artistic grading. So what you can do is add a node in the series here, because they go in series, and change that to your heart's content. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to do that, I just go to nodes, add a serial node, and it becomes node 2. Then I can really play with this and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. If I'm not interested in having that edit, I can click on the number, the name of it, and kind of turn it off. I can even delete it completely and start over. Okay, So that's what the nodes are for. It's just really basic. I'm not going to go into it in detail. You can do a bunch of crazy stuff with nodes, like parallel nodes and all kinds of different type of node editing that gives you really good control over your color grading. Um, but this is a basic tutorial, so we won't go in there. Now, by default, every clip has its own node, as well as the timeline can have its own node. In this project, there is no node for the timeline, which is kind of like a global uh, effect. Okay, So now that I've done this clip, I can go and work on the second one. So the second one is not edited at all. And I can start and do pretty much exactly the same thing that I did um, on the other clip. Now, they're slightly different, but they're similar enough that I'm just going to take a shortcut and show you another, another tip. So let's say that these two are very similar in lighting, what have you. And you've done the work to make this look the way you want. Well, DaVinci Resolve allows you to copy the edits 
from one node. So here I have this node selected. Then I press Command C and I go to the other clip and it's now selected its node and I press Command V to paste. So basically copying and pasting the, the uh, edits. And you can see right away that this takes on a new look. Okay. If you're happy with what, what you've done, which uh, for this tutorial, I'm fine with this, you go to your deliver tab. And this is basically the last step in the whole process uh, that allows you to render out your video. I usually make the container QuickTime. I do H.264, but you can see that it supports a bunch of different codecs. You can change the compression quality. I leave it at best. And down here you have resolution. I'm gonna do 4K UHD. And I usually change my audio codec to AAC just to save on space just a bit. If you go down further on this panel, you can select where you want to put your finished video. So let's say I want to put it into my finished Phantom 3 video and you can give it a name. So let's call it uh, November 12th Test Drone Edits. And then it's simply adding to the render queue and click Start Render to do the whole process. Now, this is the reason that I switched to DaVinci Resolve. The rendering, even at 4K, with a bunch of edits is super fast. I'm, I'm editing this on a uh, 2014 uh, 27 inch Retina iMac and it's basically the base configuration. So it's just i5 uh, processor. I did upgrade the RAM to 24 gigabyte. Um, but aside from that, it's, it's pretty much stock. There's, there's not a lot of power in this machine, frankly, but you can see that on this one minute clip, actually it's about 54 seconds, it's going very fast. It's always, it's almost halfway through just in the time that uh, uh, we are talking. So it will be done in a second here. I'm not gonna show you, but this is one of the primary reasons that I myself switched to DaVinci Resolve 12, aside from just the very powerful uh, color grading capabilities. It just renders super super fast anyways i hope that this intro into uh editing your phantom 3 professional uh, or any drone videos frankly with davinci resolve uh helps you get started in davinci resolve i know there are a lot of tutorials on youtube but i'm just hoping that this is one of those uh quick and dirty get you started and allow you to watch other videos and learn other other tricks if you have any questions, just leave it in the comment section and I will uh, respond as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys.